welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now, this week, the Bitcoin surged to $63,000 for the first time since November 2021. Spot Bitcoin ETFs are seeing massive inflows of money and the big event to watch in April 2024 will be Bitcoin halving, ahead of which there is massive interest in this asset class. But what does this mean for the crypto ecosystem and how can you build a portfolio? Joining us now is Vikram Subaraj, the co-founder and CEO of Geotis Technologies. Vikram, thank you so much for joining me. First, if we can start, you know, just at the top, right? I mean, what is the reason for this big surge that we've seen in the price of Bitcoin? Okay, so... <clears throat> When we talk about cryptocurrencies, we have to understand that this is an asset which has been there for the past 10, uh, 10 to 13 years now. So there is a price discovery that is happening over a period of time. So here the price discovery is happening in cycles of four years. Let's keep it as simple as that. Now, why is it happening in a cycles of four years? Because there is a supply chain side restriction that is happening in the Bitcoin ecosystem every four years, which is leading to an impact in the prices. Now, coupling with this, a big event had happened in the crypto ecosystem, which is the Bitcoin spot ETF. This was a much awaited event. Uh, and when the Bitcoin spot ETF was approved, what had happened was it had paved way for a lot of old money or the institutional investors and family offices, all these people to get into the Bitcoin rally. Now, when these institutional players got into the Bitcoin ETF, what had created in turn was an increase in prices and the price rallying after that. Now, this, which is going to be coupled along with the halving event, halving is basically a restriction or supply of the new Bitcoins which are going to enter into this ecosystem. So both these things are creating an extremely positive effect on prices. Uh, this is a rally that, you know, if, if you ask most of the crypto players, they would say that, we had already predicted that this rally would happen. Uh, ideally, uh, with the supply side restriction, this is what we have seen in the past three halvings that has happened before. And ideally, there is uh, uh, nothing that is out there in the market to prove us wrong this time that you know such a rally could not happen this time. Uh, what was uh, uh, somewhere on $16,000 in 2022, somewhere in November, December, uh, Bitcoin prices, we are talking about uh, an all-time high reaching at $64,000 uh, just two days back, which has corrected, and now it's somewhere at $62,000. So both uh, Bitcoin spot ETF, the effect of that, and a huge amount of funds flowing in, you know, somewhere around $7.7 .7 billion that have flowed in through ETF, along with the news of a supply that is going to get restric restricted, is creating a very good positive mm -hmm. uh, impact on the Bitcoin prices now. So that's very interesting. You're saying that the two reasons for the surge that we're seeing in the in the price of Bitcoin, one is, of course, the spot ETF and the kind of money that is getting. But the other one is Bitcoin halving, which is an event that will happen in April of this year and happens once in four years. Uh, Vikram, explain to us slightly in more detail for a layman, right? What exactly is Bitcoin halving? And um, what has happened in the previous halvings? Has the price gone up substantially? What can we expect going forward? Yeah, so so let's uh, okay. Let's not get into too technical stuff. Uh, I'll just state two facts, and I'll just explain how halving is going to work. One, uh, there is not going to be more than twenty-one million bitcoins that are ever going to be generated into the ecosystem, right? So twenty-one million bitcoins is the limit of bitcoins that can ever enter into the ecosystem. So when I say enter into the ecosystem, what I mean is. These 21 millions are not issued right away and, and you know, we cannot have all the supply from the day one. So what the algorithm takes care is, uh, so uh, as you know, this is a decentralized ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Let us consider that it's a decentralized database. To make an entry into this database, we need the help of people called miners. Let's just consider them as general accountants who are going to help us make these entries into the blockchain database. So for doing this activity, they are going to get a reward. So what is this reward? This reward is again in Bitcoins. So the new Bitcoins that are going to enter into the ecosystem are these rewards which are given to the miner and these miners and then they go do secondary trades so that they can uh, you know, get their fiat currencies or other money to, uh, to take care of their expenses. So this reward was initially 50 Bitcoins to begin with. And every four year, this new issuance of Bitcoin is going to get halved. Now, let us consider, and on average, every 10 minutes, this reward is given to a miner. So every 10 minutes, 
In 2009-2010, a miner got 50 bitcoins that he could use, but the price at that point of time was very low. It was, you know, the uh, the founder Satoshi Nakamoto, or is it, a, is it a person or a group of people, had this foresight that over the period of time, the prices might appreciate, and there is no need to incentivize the miners to a greater level. So it was built in the program that every four years, this incentive is going to get halved. So what started in 50 bitcoins in the first halving, it went to 25, then 12.5. Now the last one, now what's running is 6.25. And in this halving, it would get down to 3.125 bitcoins. Now, what is ideally happening here is now suddenly, now for example, uh, within a day, there were 900 bitcoins that were issued into the ecosystem. That is going to get halved now to 450 bitcoins. Mm -hmm. now, you know, now you understand the impact, right? Suddenly a huge... Uh, supply restriction is going to happen. Absolutely. This, during every halving, has got a positive impact on prices that we have seen. The other big event to watch out for is the Ethereum ETF, right? Spot ETF. Tell us a little bit about that. Are you expecting it or is it just, uh, you know, is it just hope that people have? And once that happens, then what what is the kind of move that we're expecting to see? Yeah, if you, if you had asked me this question a year back, I would have said, maybe, you know, we don't know. We have not seen things like this happen. But now we are all bullish, right? We have seen the Bitcoin ETF, right? There is all the more reason uh, mm -hmm. that an Ethereum ETF could get approved. And the best thing is Ethereum as an asset class has been doing a lot of innovations month over month. Uh, when, we, uh, when we look into any particular uh, uh, blockchain ecosystem, they are having an impact of what Ethereum is doing in its own ecosystem. You know, they're taking a learning that Ethereum has done and they're implementing in their blockchain ecosystems as well. So, and uh, the community that Ethereum has has also been massively growing and the improvement that they're doing uh, on the on-chain and also on the future plans, they seem to be very solid. Now, this solid tech, along with an approval of an ETF, is just going to be a massive event that is going to happen in this ecosystem. Now, why this ETF is very important, right? Now, now let's just take a quick understanding and example. Now, when you wanted to buy a Bitcoin in India, for example, okay, I'm not saying there's an option to buy in India to buy an ETF. I'm just quoting how it simplifies things. Now, till date, if you had to buy, you had to come to a crypto exchange, you had to buy from us, you have to know what a wallet is, and you have to do your withdrawals and everything. Now, imagine the same thing being delivered in your general brokerage account. You know, be it your, your Zerodas or Angel Broking or anyone with general brokerage account, you can just go buy a Bitcoin, you know, which is something that you're usually used to, right? You don't have to learn anything to buy something here. That is the biggest effect an ETF has had. Correct. And that is the biggest adoption driver that is going to happen. Absolutely. So, yes. I mean, it's, it's very similar to a Nifty ETF, right? Or a Nifty index fund or whatever, where you really don't need to know much. It's just like a index that you're uh, sort of replicating. Got it. But you know, Vikram, as you and I know, for many investors, even today, the absence of a regulator is a big concern in cryptocurrencies. Where are we at currently in terms of regulation? What is the kind of work that has been done in the last six months? And what else needs to be done to strengthen the ecosystem? Yeah, yeah. So, so let's uh, just just start with the obvious point here. Uh, is the crypto ecosystem regulated? No, we are. Uh, crypto ecosystem is not regulated in India yet. So the next question comes. So does it mean that it is not legal to trade or to hold in cryptocurrency? No, you can trade in cryptocurrencies. You can hold cryptocurrencies. Uh, you, you can transfer it to your friend. You can receive it from your friend. Uh, so that's all. That's all legal in India to be done. Uh, so what has happened in the regulatory front over the past couple of years? The first major regulatory intervention that had happened was in the form of taxes. Uh, there, were, there was a tax that was introduced uh, that had put cryptocurrency gains uh, to have a 30 percentage income tax coupled along with a 1 percentage TDS when there is a sell that is made or when there is a transfer of asset that is made. Now, when we move on, yes, it is a hefty tax. Uh, definitely, we would want the governments to really relook into the taxes. Now, apart from this tax, now what had happened, one of the biggest things that had happened in the ecosystem was all the crypto entities having bought under the FIU registration. So why is this very critical, right? So what is FIU? FIU is the Financial Intelligence Institute of India, which takes care of money laundering and terrorist financing uh, intelligence uh, in India. So... Uh, why is it important for the ecosystem? Part A, one of the biggest concerns or codes that everyone gave 
against uh, the crypto ecosystem was about money laundering and terrorist financing. This directly addresses that. Now, we as ecosystem players, now we are part of addressing the factor that this ecosystem will not have any such issues or we will fight to the level that, you know, we are going to take this from this ecosystem. So now we have become a part of this committee or we have become a part of this institution which is fighting against money laundering that rather than, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, a few years back where we were on the opposite side getting a lot of flair for the government agencies and the general crowd saying that maybe a lot of uh, ransoms and, you know, money laundering is happen to, happening through crypto. So uh, uh, with the FIU registration coming in, a lot of crypto entities also have gone to heavy learning here on compliance. We've implemented a lot of uh, compliance measures, new KYC norms, enhanced due diligence norm. We are moving towards a zone of acting or having compliance similar or even better than banks in most of the cases, right? So that is one big intervention that has happened. Now, post that, we do have other general norms that we follow. Like we've got an advertising guidelines that we follow now, uh, which is again, strict guidelines that we follow. Now, what has also happened, if you notice, in so, G20, Vikram, we have... Uh, you know yeah. what, we have. Uh, I got your point. So you're saying that a lot of regulatory issues have been addressed and the ecosystem has become a bit stronger in the cryptocurrency space. We just have to take a short commercial break and we are getting a lot of queries coming from our investor friends. So we'll do one thing, we'll come back with our guest in just a bit to talk more about cryptocurrencies and we'll also address all of your queries in just a bit. Stay tuned.